Did you ever ponder why the United States Marine Corps hymn references battles fought with the Barbary pirates? Let's take a deep dive into exploring this interesting aspect of history. The hymn's opening lines, from the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli, have always stirred the hearts of those who hear it. Each word is carefully chosen, each phrase meticulously crafted, each line steeped in the rich history and tradition of the Corps. The origins of the hymn can be traced back to the post-Civil War era. It was then that the lyrics were penned, sometime after 1867. The hymn was written not just as a tribute, but also as a testament to the valour and the indomitable spirit of the Marines. The lyrics were carefully chosen to commemorate two of the Marine Corps' most renowned battles. The phrase, Halls of Montezuma, is a direct reference to the Mexican-American War that took place between 1846 and 1848. This was a war where the Marines demonstrated incredible bravery, tactical acumen, and steadfast resolve. This particular conflict holds a special place in Marine Corps lore, symbolizing the courage and sacrifice that are hallmarks of the spirit. On the other hand, the shores of Tripoli alludes to the battles fought against the notorious Barbary pirates. This was no ordinary enemy, but a formidable adversary that had been a thorn in the side of the United States Navy. The Barbary pirates were known for their ruthlessness and cunning, and it was against this backdrop that the Marine Corps and the US Navy engaged them in battle. The hymn is a proud recollection of these two significant battles. The lines weave a tapestry of the Marine Corps' rich and storied past, a past that is forever etched in the annals of American history. It is more than just a hymn, it is an anthem that captures the spirit of the Marines and their unwavering commitment to their duty. In conclusion, the shores of Tripoli harks back to the battles the Marine Corps and the US Navy fought against the notorious Barbary pirates. These pirates are terrifying scourge, not just on the coastline of North Africa and the expanse of the Mediterranean Sea, but also a significant threat to a numerous areas of Europe for a prolonged span of three centuries. Their influence and power reached far and wide, causing havoc, instilling fear, and becoming a force to be reckoned with. Their infamous reputation was firmly established, deeply rooted in their primary, most heinous interest, the dealing of human beings, their lives converted into commodities to be bought and sold into the deplorable practice of slavery. The Mediterranean Basin, a hub of cultural and economic activities, had long a centre for this inhumane practice, long before the rise and expansion of the mighty Roman Empire. Historical records abound with tales of men, women and children torn from their homes, their loved ones, their lives to be thrust into a life of servitude, their humanity stripped away, their existence reduced to a mere possession. The Romans, known for their military prowess, architectural marvels and political intrigue, were also the orchestrators of an extensive network of slavery. They enslaved individuals from all corners of their vast empire, capturing and enslaving a multitude of ethnicities. This included the hardy Franks from Western Europe, the fierce Germans from the farthest northern reaches, the Slavs from the heart of Europe, the ancient Greeks, and various Balkan tribes known for their resilience. The African continent too was spared. Africans were traded to Rome by Egypt, a kingdom renowned for its treasures and its pharaohs. Additionally, the historical land of Israel, the homeland of the Jewish people, saw its citizens fall victim to the rampant slave trade. This gruesome practice was not limited to the territories of the Roman Empire. It continued unabated, persisting across the centuries, reaching into Europe, extending along the North African coast and permeating into the Middle East. It became a deeply ingrained part of society, an accepted norm until relatively recent times, when finally, the voices of the oppressed rose loud enough to be heard, and the world began to shift towards a more humane existence. These pirates were a terror, not only on the coast of North Africa and the Mediterranean Sea, but also to a large part of Europe for three centuries. Their infamous reputation was rooted in their primary interest, human beings to be sold into slavery. Slavery was a prevalent practice in the Mediterranean basin long before the Roman expansion. The Romans enslaved people from all corners of their empire, including Franks, Germans, Slavs, Greeks, and various Balkan tribes, as well as Africans traded to Rome by Egypt and Jews from Israel. This practice continued in Europe, the North African coast, and the Middle East until relatively recent times. 
In the 1500s, the Ottoman Turks, an empire of relentless and determined conquerors, extended their dominion along the North African coast in a strategic move that would solidify their influence in the region. This grand endeavor resulted in the founding of the Barbary States, a collection of autonomous provinces that would play an important role in the geopolitics of the era. This expansion was not a simple process. The terrain was harsh and unforgiving, and the existing populace was a blend of unique cultures and identities, obstinate in their resistance to foreign rule. The Berbers, a collection of indigenous people, were the most notable among these. Known for their fiercely independent nature and spirit, they were not easily subdued. The Berbers, along with other tribes and communities, were a formidable group that posed a significant challenge to the Ottomans. The sheer distance from the center of the Ottoman Empire further complicated matters. The Barbary coast was separated by vast stretches of land and water, making it difficult for the Ottomans to maintain a firm grasp over these territories. The physical disconnect was as much a barrier as the cultural and social differences that defined the region. Hence, the control of the Ottoman Empire over the Barbary coast was more symbolic than effective. Nonetheless, their influence was not entirely absent. The Ottomans exercised a degree of control that was more akin to a loose supervision, a careful balance of power that allowed local autonomy. They permitted the people of the coast to lead their lives independently, free from the direct interference of the Ottoman authorities. There was a tacit understanding that these communities could govern their own affairs as long as they acknowledged the Ottoman Sultan as their overlord. This understanding extended to the agreement that they would offer their assistance in times of need, providing military support or other resources when the empire called upon them. However, due to the distance and the fiercely independent nature of the Berbers and others, the control of the Ottoman Empire over the Barbary coast was nominal. They allowed the people of the coast to live independently, provided they recognized the Ottoman Sultan as their overlord and offered assistance when called upon. The Barbary pirates were not just locals. They were more than that, far more. With the passage of time and the changing course of events, they evolved into a fraternity that welcomed not only locals, but also many from foreign lands. Europeans in particular found themselves drawn to these pirates, finding the prospect and adventurous life on the high seas appealing. As time passed, these Europeans weren't merely a handful, they were a massive wave, a formidable force. These were not your stereotypical pirates. They were men, and occasionally women, from diverse walks of life, all seeking a drastic change from the mundane existence they were used to. They came from different countries, bore different names, spoke different languages, and yet they all became a part of the Barbary pirates. They were akin to today's mercenaries, soldiers of fortune who were not bound by nationality or faith. Their sole purpose was seeking adventure and acquiring quick riches. The lure of easy money, the thrill of living a life filled with danger, the opportunity of making a name for themselves in the annals of piracy, these were the factors that attracted these Europeans to the Barbary pirates. They of the monotony of their lives, tired of the societal norms that bound them, and thus they sought an escape, an escape into the world of piracy. Contrary to popular belief, joining the ranks of the Barbary pirates was not an easy task. It required grit, courage, and an unyielding spirit. However, the rewards were plentiful for those who were brave enough to take the risk. They found in piracy a life of excitement, a life of uncertainty, a life of endless possibilities. The arrival of these Europeans transformed the Barbary pirates into an eclectic mix of individuals. This amalgamation of diverse personalities, skills and experiences further fueled the Barbary pirates' notoriety. It made them a force to be reckoned with. Their reputation spread far and wide, making their brutal reign on the Mediterranean Sea even more infamous. This eclectic mix of individuals further fueled the Barbary pirates' notoriety and their brutal reign on the Mediterranean Sea. In summary, the reference to the shores of Tripoli in the United States Marine Corps hymn is a nod to the battles fought against the infamous Barbary pirates. These pirates, a blend of locals and European adventurers, terrorized the Mediterranean Sea and beyond for three centuries. Their primary interest in human slavery marked a dark chapter in history, one that the United States Marine Corps played a role in ending.